Thanks to KTC for sponsoring a portion of this video. What's the best home entertainment system you can get for $1,000? Can it even be done? Let's talk about that. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and in today's video, I will tell you what my top picks are for systems that come in under a thousand bucks, but there's more to it than that. This needs to be a bigger conversation than me just saying buy this and buy this and peace be with you. In fact, I want any of you out there watching who are wanting to put a great system together and working with a budget to hang out for a bit. In fact, if you have a partner, spouse, or roommate, anyone else involved in the decision-making process around this, go get them, go grab them, get comfy, grab a warm drink, I'm like super into hot cider these days, and watch this video together. I've got a lot of experience talking with folks about their needs, wants, and budgets, and helping them come together on a decision and both be super excited about it. I'm looking forward to this, and I hope you are too. Let's get into it. So as promised, we'll start with what I think are the best TV and audio combos that come in under 1K. And then we'll talk about some other options because there can never be a one size fits all answer to this. But if it were my money, here's what I'd do. I'd get the 55 inch Hisense U7K for the TV. I've already explained in detail on this channel why this TV is the very best choice for most folks. But the simple version is that it offers incredibly good picture quality for the price. Like, no way this TV should look this good at this price. I've had one around here now for a few months and it's been great. I'd buy this TV for my mom, except I already got her last year's model. Now, I chose the 55 inch because of the price. The 65 inch is slightly more expensive, but we'll get into where you might wanna put your money in a moment. The next thing I'd get is the Vizio M-Series M512A-H6. Terrible model number, in fact, We'll leave it up on the screen for a while. You can write it down or we'll put it down in the description because who can remember all that? But set the model number aside for a moment because this is hands down the best soundbar surround system you can get for under $500. It's like unanimous across the internet. Feel free to cross-reference if you'd like. Now, if you're not really into the whole surround sound soundbar thing and you're more of a music listener who would also like to have your movies, TV shows, and sports sound epic too, I'd sub in Klipsch's The Fives for this speaker system. The Fives are just astonishingly good. They have an HDMI input so you can easily connect your new TV. They also have Bluetooth built in, plus an aux input for any number of other devices that you might wanna connect. They sound exquisite for music, and while they don't have the low-end rumble of a subwoofer, like what you get with the Vizio soundbar, they still have plenty ample bass, so the sound is really big and full, I just, I love these things. So with those two options, I guess that's it. Well, yeah, I mean, we met our thousand dollar budget already. You know, when I was preparing this video, I thought, well, I'm comfortable with those picks. They are the best you can get for the money, but that doesn't sound like a lot to me. I mean, to be fair, all the apps you need to stream whatever you want are built right into the TV and the soundbar comes with everything you need to get it hooked up. So do the Klipsch speakers. So you get these two pieces and you are set with awesome picture, incredibly good sound, and a wealth of shows and movies to watch even if you don't have cable. But what if you want a little more stuff right now? What if you wanna get a game console like the new PS5 Slim model or the Xbox Series X or S? What if you want a bigger TV? What if you're a hopeless lover of music and a vinyl nut like me and wanna get a turntable to go with the system? Or what if you just wanna get an Apple TV or a Blu-ray player? What then? Well, there are a few ways that we can make that happen without blowing the budget. We can scale back on either both the TV and audio system, but when we do that, we'll need to adjust our expectations a little bit. And by the way, as I start talking about the options here, don't worry about keeping track of all the model numbers. I'll put links to all these products at their best prices down in the description below. And yes, we may make a small commission if you choose to shop through our links. And we thank you so much for that. Ever since I started raving about OLED TVs, folks have been asking for OLED gaming monitors. Well, the good news is that OLED gaming monitors are finally here. 
The thing is, they tend to be pretty spendy. Totally worth it, but spendy. Obviously, if you can save some money on an OLED monitor, you should. And that's where KTC's G27 P6 comes in. KTC has been manufacturing monitors for brands like Samsung and ViewSonic for years, but now it's arrived in the US with its own brand of monitors. And that means you can have all the quality and more features at a more affordable price. Unlike TVs, OLED monitors rely on your PC for picture processing, which means I 100% stand behind buying a product from the brand that makes OLED monitors for other brands, but without the price hikes that come with those brand names. That's KTC. This G27 P6 has everything you want, plus some stuff the others don't have. That includes a crisp and lightning quick 240 hertz OLED panel, FreeSync and G-Sync compatibility, all the cables you need right in the box, a fully adjustable stand and built-in speakers, and it costs less than the competition. Oh, and for you purists out there, I measured this monitor from KTC and using its built-in DCI-P3 picture mode, it produced remarkably accurate colors and 1000 nits peak HDR brightness on a 3% window. So game away for sure. And this monitor is great for production work too. I mean, I'm sold. KTC is not getting this back for me. I highly recommend you get one too. Find a link to the G27 P6 at its best price down below. Thanks again to KTC for sponsoring this portion of our video. Before we go on, let's play a quick game. What is the most popular TV screen size to purchase in North America right now? Is it A, 55 inches, B, 65 inches, C, 75 inches, or D, 110 inches? I'll wait as you lock in your answers by leaving a comment below. Okay, survey says 65 inches. Ding, 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 that's right, you win. Come on down, you're the next contestant on The Caleb Is Right. Okay, back to helping you out. Now, going back to earlier in this video, I recommended the Hisense U7K because I think it offers the best overall bang for the buck, especially for folks who are fairly picky about picture quality or otherwise have pretty high standards. With that said, the Hisense U6K is also a really solid TV. Now, by the numbers, it doesn't get quite as bright in HDR highlights, but it does do HDR and Dolby Vision and is overall more than bright enough for most households. Plus it's got a bunch of gaming friendly features too. I haven't tested it personally because I've just not had the time, but I have spent several hours in front of it and it's a darn impressive TV. But you don't have to take my word for it. Other reviewers are saying it is one of the best budget TVs they've ever tested. So while the U6K may not be as high performance as the U7K, it's still a tremendous value with a lot of advanced tech inside. And I think it's got the goods to not only meet, but exceed most folks' expectations, especially if you're upgrading from an older TV, say five or more years old. The U6K in many ways will be more impressive than some upscale TVs from six years or so ago. And if we plug the U6K into our calculator, we see that you can get a 55 inch model for just 350. Or if what you really wanted was a 65 inch screen size, you can get the 65 inch for $500, the same price as the U7K at just 55 inches. So if you're wanting to spread out your budget a bit more, we can do the 55 inch U6K and reclaim 150 bucks. That's enough to get you into a pretty nice starter turntable that you can upgrade down the line or a simple Sony 4K Blu-ray player so you can really see what that TV can do. Or we can apply that 150 bucks toward a game console. We just need a hundred bucks more for the Xbox Series S or a Nintendo Switch. Which brings us to seeing what we can do about scaling back our sound solution. Now, while the Vizio soundbar I recommended earlier is without a doubt the greatest bang for your buck system on the market right now, there are other really high quality options for less. There's the Vizio M51AX-J6, which still does Dolby Atmos for only $300. That $200 savings makes the Switch or Series S totally possible. Or let's say you don't really need or want to have independent surround speakers. Maybe you don't even have space for them. The Samsung HWQ60C is excellent, as is the Klipsch Cinema 400. I love the Klipsch for the bass impact especially. You can really get a cinematic experience with that one. And if a subwoofer just isn't possible for you, you can save even more with an all-in-one soundbar. 
The Vizio M series all-in-one is just ridiculously good for the low, low price of 150 bucks, which that would save you $350 alone, giving you enough scratch to make an Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5 possible. So as you can see, there are a lot of different system options available depending on your needs and priorities. If massive surround sound isn't important, you can get the Vizio all-in-one soundbar and step up your TV to the 65-inch U6K or the 55-inch U7K. We've got some sliders that we can move around so that the money you spend goes where you need it to and you wind up with the experience that you need and want. So now that I've laid out some options for you, I wanna talk a bit about the investment that you're making here. Let's be clear, you're making an investment in daily enjoyment and happiness. If being stuck at home for almost a year and a half taught us anything, it's that our home entertainment is of higher value to us than we may have once thought. I know a lot of folks whose perspective shifted during the stay at home times when they relied more heavily on their home entertainment systems and realized they were pretty meh. And personally speaking, snuggling up on the couch with my loved ones and watching a movie or binging a few episodes of a favorite TV show creates some of the most lasting fond memories that I have. All of this is to say that you're really making an investment here. And while I understand budgets can be tight and there's a real need to keep costs under control, consider this. If you break down the cost of an extra $300 over your budget and Take that over, say, a five-year lifespan of enjoyment that you'll get from your home entertainment system. That works out to be $5 a month. That's one less latte a month. Shoot, these days, that's one less gallon of gas a month for a lot of us. Way less than the cost of one streaming service that you're probably paying for and don't even use. And if we bump that up to 500 bucks, that works out to be $8.30 a month. For me, that's one less quad oat milk mocha per month, which honestly is a sacrifice that I need to make anyway. My bigger point is that I really want you to be thinking about the long-term enjoyment versus long-term cost when deciding on what you wanna get. You'll be living with this stuff for years and you'll want to thoroughly enjoy it. So don't cut corners too deeply. Make strategic cuts, but not to the point that you'll end up wishing you had gotten something just a little bit better. Great example, a friend of mine came to me wanting a TV for about $1,000 and was debating between a 55 and 65 inch TV. Now their living room isn't massive to begin with and the way they have it set up, they sit pretty close to the TV, about seven feet away. A 55 inch TV would have been perfectly fine, but they considered the long-term use and cost and decided to get a 65 inch and they are so glad they made that call because they knew as soon as they got that 65 inch in there that they would have been much less thrilled with a 55. For them, getting that larger screen size lined up with their values and priorities and they sit down and watch that TV, a Sony X90L by the way, and get a little boost of pleasure because not only does the TV look great, but they feel like they made a smart decision. And I don't know about you, but for me, that satisfaction counts for a lot. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I really wanna know if you found this video helpful. So would you do me a solid and let me know down in the comments. And if there's something else you think would have been valuable in this video in particular, leave me a comment about that too. If you did like it, slap this video with a like so it reaches the folks who need it. Consider subscribing for more. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.